for Norwich Boxing, here with Ryan Walsh, the new British champion. Um, so back in the gym now, uh, how are you feeling to walk in the kickstop gym as a British champion? Yeah, it's nice, it's nice. Um, felt really good, I've come back in on Thursday, might be Tuesday or Thursday, I come back in. And it was really nice, we've got some pictures with Graham and that. They're the things that you think about coming into a camp during a camp, sorry, and at the end, the things that you're going to like to do once you've acquired your title, and that was the British title. And I've had two years to think about these things, two years to plan and enjoy what what, what would be afterwards. Um, it's been surreal, it's been a mental week, it's been a lot of attention off the local press, and we even got on the news from my twin, which was really nice. I didn't expect that, I didn't plan for that. I really enjoyed a radio interview as well with my brothers, yeah. which was nice. Anything that I can do with them, I, I don't like doing things on my own at all. We come as a free, we are a package, so yeah, it's been crazy. Um, you sort of say about like things that you've done with your twin. Obviously, without Liam, you wouldn't have been able to sort of write yourselves in history as the first twins to hold the British title. Exactly. Um, For both of you, like, what have you said? After winning that, like for you now to both be the first, it's the first time it's ever happened. Have you sort of spoke about it or? Yeah, it was, um, I'm a massive, massive boxing fan. I just think I could, I'd like to be a boxing historian, but I don't know. I haven't read enough books yet. <laughs> I've read boxing history twice, but it stops at like quite modern now. But um, I said it to Liam. I said we've got an opportunity and a chance. And through after losing to Selby. Liam did say to me, he's probably the wisest person I know, he said, uh, Every, I don't know why you lost, but everything happens for a reason. And on Saturday night, that was the reason, because all the pressure was on me. And I was happy about that. Some people, you got choices under pressure, you were crushed under it, or, like they said, pressure makes diamonds. And I really, I really enjoyed that pressure. I didn't really feel it. I got more butterflies the day before, and I was really <laughs> excited the day before, and on the night, it was just business and work I suppose and I got, got down to business and work as soon as I could never felt massively never felt any sort of pressure really I uh, kind of took that in my stride and that's what I look forward to another fight where it's just a fight there won't be that history pressure on me there won't be any it'll be a fight for the British title and it's going to be really interesting because someone's going to come and try and take something off me I'm going to have a belt for someone to come and try and take off me and then uh, I can say and say good luck to the man who tries that um, sort of looking at opponents, one that sort of put himself out there is Mitchell Smith. Um, who? Never made <laughs> who? Never made the weight. Who? Who is that again? Um, so. Where's he from? What's he won? Is he? A, is he even a feather? Is he, is he it, exactly. He's, he's never not made in the featherweight the, division, though, is he? So, for for the purpose of this, if you're not in the featherweight division, who? <laughs> so we'll forget. If about we're him. talking about super feathers, there's a monster up there. My twin. Mm. He's nine four. I know him, I know Liam Walsh. Stephen Smith's a great fighter at Super Feather. No, Mitchell Smith. Is Super Feather, is he? Never so heard of him. I ain't got a clue. Let's come back to your way then. Josh Warrington. Josh Warrington. A fight that you wanted um, prior to this one being made. Fight that big for her, Josh. <laughs> Pff, pathetic. Um, I respect the guy. I don't respect that comment. And when I do see him, I'll be th ask him about that comment. Beggar, eh? 29 year old, I need to beg. It's a funny sport, boxing. If you can sell a few tickets and you get a bit of momentum, you can do what Josh has done. And I respect him, he's got better each fight. He even stops him here, so I have to respect him. He's, he's got a better win over a, a common opponent. But I didn't respect the comment when through Twitter, which is a great tool, but sometimes it makes tools yeah. like him with that comment calling me, I was begging him. At the time was when I was meant to be fighting him, I was gonna be made mandatory. There's a comment that he made. Oh, you're begging for a fight. Well, when you're two years out of the ring and no one wants to fight, it kind of makes you look like a beggar. But yeah, yeah, yeah. thankfully, the British Board of Boxing made me the mandatory and I didn't need to beg no more. <laughs> I didn't even need to ask no more because then that, once you get that, the mandatory spot in modern boxing is huge. If you can't get to that, this is this is Mitchell Hoosh, whatever yeah, his name yeah, yeah. is, he hasn't got anything. He's got nothing. He, can't, he wouldn't dream of getting into a mandatory spot in his own division because that means he's got to fight a monster and he don't want to be exposed there. And if he does somehow manage to get into a position to fight me, oh, baby, I like to expose <laughs> celebrities, you know, these celebrity boxers. I said it to Liam recently, if anything I can define my career by now, from this point, I want to be the man that rids boxing and the misfits and, and the people in boxing, these celebrities, because they can sell a ticket, they can dodge people like me, real fighters, all we want to do is fight. All I want to do is fight. 
For two years I've struggled not to get these fights. And you know what? It was worth it for that two years to understand. I got a big understanding of, of boxing, a life, of everything. So I have no chip on my shoulder about the last two years. I just have something that people are gonna, hopefully going to want to come and get. And this Smith, whoever he is, I'm sure, still can't. I'll put a name to him. Did he come out with some guy? <laughs> What's he called? Yeah, well, whoever yeah. he is, whoever, whatever. But Warrington, he has something that I really want. And I don't even need to beg for it. I'm hoping the Commonwealth will do the right thing and maybe make me the mandatory. We'll see. I mean, I remember after fighting Selby, I did call the Commonwealth and say, like, come on, I must be, must be, must be worthy. I must yeah. be somewhere about it. He tells me, uh, no, I'm not even in their top ten, which was... If, if you listen to BoxRec, I'm still probably not in their top ten. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I looked at BoxRec yesterday. <laughs> which is really so, interesting. Yeah. I yes. find myself, I think... Comfortably, I can sit here and say I think I'm second best in Britain behind um, one very, very, very special talent in Lee, Lee Selby, a very good fighter and a man, a man who fought me when no one else would. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I have 100% respect for him. People are going to argue and say, oh, Josh Warren has to be European champion, he's this champion. If I kept the British title rather than fight me, so yeah. how, can I ever, how can I respect that? If, if he fights me, we'll find out his best. If he doesn't and he continues in his route, which I don't. He doesn't have to fight anyone. You see with him, he's in a unique position. He chooses who he fights. Yeah. Him and his team, with the, the tickets they sell, they can choose who they fight. He did really well against Brunker. I respect that. It was a good, good performance. But he wants my respect. He's got to fight me, hasn't he? So, and I've said from dot one, I'm willing to go to Leeds as a United fan too. I might be wearing a bit of Norwich today, but come on, just, uh, I've got to spot my local too. I always hope Norwich do well. But... Um, I'd love that fight. I'd love yeah, to be. Really, yeah. I'd be an underdog as yeah. well. Look, he just stops me. I only won on points, and someone said controversial, whatever. But it's a fight that, and it, 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 that belt more than him. If he didn't have that belt, I'd want it off anyone else. So, yeah, so it's, I, it, it, it's another little potential bit of history. I don't know about the Commonwealth. I'm not as historic on that. I wouldn't be surprised if there has been two foreigners, or I don't think it's certainly been two in England hold it at the same time. But that's, that's something I'd like. So another little bit of history for us to write, potentially. Um, talking about the two that you sort of regard up the top there with you, Lee Selby and sort of Josh Warrington behind, um, with you fighting Warrington, there's obviously talks Warrington and Selby. Do you feel the winner of you and Warrington could go on and fight Selby? Potentially, yeah, because that would be... Um, yeah, well, well, yeah, you could because Warrington's been the European champion. It, Warrington's far classer for the position he's in. So would he fight me and risk that? I don't think he should. I don't think he would. Would I in his position? I, I certainly wouldn't have vacated first, but no one's going to make me vacate at nine star. Nobody. At least I'll be decided he wanted to come back and take the British title. I won't vacate. <laughs> yeah, I'd yeah, fight, yeah. you know? <laughs> That's what we're meant to be here to do, to fight, to show we're the best. So it's very difficult. The winner of that would be propelled to a point in public consciousness so that people want to see that fight yeah. and I think a lot of people would rather see Josh win it because of these following and things and then get that shot and then a lot of people are writing Josh off straight away against Lee I understand why stylistic I think Josh is probably mad for Lee um, On the night Frank Warren mentioned you and your brother Liam coming back to Norwich Yeah, yeah, yeah um, possibly putting on a big fight at Carroll Road um, how does that make you feel to think? Brilliant. Really, really good. <laughs> Me and Liam have been joking who'd be top of the bill. <laughs> that'd be, because uh, we have two British title fights one night. I think that'd be uh, really special, wouldn't it? It'd be really, really special. And why not? Norwich is a big city. It's got a big following. It's, um, I don't think there's, I've been in the stands for Norwich. 27,000 people, week in, week out. They sell 25,000 season tickets. They're, um, the phenomenally well-supported club, and like I always say, if you could get 10% of them people to just for one weekend transfer a bit of loyalty yeah. to to local professionals, um, oh, you'd have a massive hit show. And, uh, and I think big-time boxing in Norwich hasn't been here since probably Thacko, has it yeah. really? So yeah. and before that, Herbie. So we have had good fighters here from Norwich. Just um, I think that'd be brilliant. I would. And do you think we'll see Michael Michael Walsh back out? in the ring in Norwich if that, that was to happen since Saturday he's been um, more than he's changed his mind a little bit <laughs> I, 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 want him, I think with boxing it's, it's tough because you got to love this sport you got to love it to the point where you can not fight for two years properly and 
still keep getting up, still keep running, still keep working out. Like I've said a few times, I'm very lucky I had Liam because his success has drove me on, made me want to, made me want to have my success. And I think potentially doing the same with Michael. Brilliant. Well, um, I hope that sort of brings us to the future in Norwich. You three getting on a show in Carroll Road, joined by all the other lads from Norwich. It would be unbelievable. I've, I've said this to Sam. You think Nathan, Sam, potentially even Anthony Ogogo, Billy, Bo Billy Bird, all these lads must be buzzing a bit because there's potential. If, we, if Frank Wong can bring a big show to Norwich and I'm them, the young pros coming over, I'd be buzzing. It's this chance to fight at home on a big show, televised big show, and hopefully, I hope, it happens a lot, that they can bring Mervyn Turner and Shamrock Promotions and maybe join it because if any man deserves to have a big show, a big televised show, what's well, Mervyn Turner? Um, one last question for you. Um, now that you're in the position of being a British champion and looked at over the whole of Britain, there's going to be amateur boxers, even people who don't box currently, who look up to you and idolise you. For anyone of a younger age, what, what bit of advice would you give them just starting off the sport? Really good question. <laughs> Mate, in, in, in boxing, they call it like the truth game as such. Make sure that you're truthful with yourself. Make sure that you're coming into the sport. Some people just come in just to be fit and you don't have to be the world beat, you don't have to be a world champion, but make sure that you're always truthful with yourself. You always work hard and, and I stress this a lot, you get what you work for, mainly in boxing. You get what you work for. And, and you know what, that's a, that's a life lesson too. You're gonna get what you work for. So if you come into boxing with the attitude, I'm gonna work the hardest, uh, I'm gonna give it my all and, and treat it as the truth game, you'll be successful. So that'd be my advice. Work as hard as you can. It's never, it might be, it's a great quote. They say, you might come into a room, especially a gym, a boxing gym, and there might be more talented people than you, but that doesn't give you any excuse not to be the hardest worker in a room. I say I live myself, I say I live by myself. There might be more talented people in a gym, but I won't give, I won't give myself an excuse not to work harder. There we go, the words of Ryan Walsh, <laughs> British champion. Thanks for your time, Thank and you. um, I'll catch you again. <laughs>